Hey y'all, I'm Stacy. And I'm Tom with RV Texas, y'all. Welcome back. You know, a couple of years ago, we did a video that gave some tips to think about when you're buying an RV. And we've gotten a lot of great feedback on that video and a lot more questions. Yeah, and as we've gone along in our journey, we've come up with several more tips. So we thought we would do like a part two to that series of buying tips. So stick around and we'll go over those other buying tips. Okay, now the first tip we want to go over is the one that was near and dear to us when we got our new RV and a lot of people that have watched our videos know that size matters. And we had a 35 foot diesel pusher and we went down to a 31 foot diesel pusher. The reason why we, we wanted a diesel pusher. So we got the smallest one we could get that's really kind of manufactured today. And the reason why is so we could get into more places. I mean, it's, it's that simple. There, we're hoping to get into a few more national parks or uh, some state parks even. We're still too big to get into some of those parks too. And, but we wanna get into as many as we can. And so I think when you're talking size matters, perhaps a 45 foot motorhome is right for you or a 45 foot fifth wheel. Yes. Uh, maybe you need all that space. Maybe you need the storage capacity and the carrying capacity. Um, maybe, you know, you're going to stay in RV parks most of the time. And in which case you don't have to worry so much about being small. Or maybe you're going to stay off grid. Right. You know, maybe you're going to stay on BLM lands and stuff like that, and you can get a big, huge fifth wheel, and it's... In that case, you just need to be worried about checking the roads to make sure they're okay to right. pull or to drive in and out, you know. But if you want to be in more... If you see yourself camping in more state parks, national parks, more natural areas, then you're really, you know, you're really going to have to think long and hard about how big do you really want to go, because... There are fewer campsites available the bigger that you get in some of those parks. Yeah, and a quick tip, some of the parks, it's not just about the campsite size, it's getting to them, the roads, and there's a lot of trees, and so the size there matters as well. That's right. So along with size, what you want to think about is how many people are going to be traveling with you on a regular basis. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a big kind of uh, ongoing saying amongst RVers, you know, a lot of people like to have drinks for six, dinner for four, sleep two. Yeah. Uh, and, and you have, you know, you can have a camper van if that's the case, um, if you only need to sleep one or two people. But if you've got children that are traveling with you or parents or other family members or friends are gonna be coming along often, you wanna pay attention to the sleeping arrangements. Yeah. You know, because not only how many people can it realistically sleep, but are those spaces big enough? Are the beds long enough for the people that you're going to be taking? You know, um, are there things, are you going to have to constantly be making the dinette into a bed and then back up again to a table for the day? Yeah, and we... There's a lot of rigs that we see that, yeah, the dinette folds down into a bed, but I mean, you could only fit an infant. Yeah, a lot of those dinettes bed. are short, so really pay it. Don't assume that just because it goes into a bed that it's going to be a bed that's usable for your needs. Yeah, because so many people, the, the salesman's going to tell you, oh, this one sleeps eight. Right. But it may sleep eight munchkins you know <laughs> you you've got to you got to see what it really sleeps and whether those eight fit your family so yeah obviously you you need to see how many you're realistically you need to sleep uh, we always say you know put the dinette down and really have somebody lay on it that's realistic for who would be going with you fold down the couches so you can see how much space you really have because some of the couches are shorter too and some of them fold out long ways and some of them fold out sideways. You know, find out if you've got a bunk above head, say one of the drop down bunks above the cabs or, or one of the cabs above a sea. Check the weight restrictions on that and make sure that they're going to be appropriate for the folks that might be sleeping up there. Yeah, even the bunk beds, a lot of them have real nice bunk beds and everything, but 
even the bunk beds are short sometimes. Sometimes so, they are. Yeah, so you just gotta check that and make sure, you know, you're getting the RV that fits your needs, that sleep the amount of people you really want it to sleep. That's right. And another question I think that comes up is, you know, where are you gonna store this unit? It's a big one that a lot of people don't think about. Yeah, because I think, you know, the average person that's new to the RV and maybe they don't have an RV, one thing you gotta consider, if you don't live on property or don't have a big place to keep the RV yourself, is you're gonna have to store it. You're that's gonna right. have to keep it as storage facility. So you need to kind of figure that out if you can, because one, you want one close to home. Right. Because if you if it's not real close to home, you're not going to use it as often because right. it's going to be a burden of how far you have to go to pick it up just to go on a trip. Right. You know, but you also the cost of that you need to consider that because it can get it can get pricey. I mean, but price is relevant relevant because it could mean the more you pay, the better security that place has too. Right. And that's important because this is a big investment that you're making in buying an RV. And if you're going to be putting it in a storage lot, you wanna make sure that it's got the best security um, that is available to you. And then you wanna take extra measures beyond that to try to make sure that it's safe and secure and locked up as best you can with a hitch lock if it's a towable, maybe locks between the tires and axles and things like that. There's a lot of different things that you can do or having closed storage with locks on the doors. Um, you know, we always suggest that people look at security or uh, uh, storage facilities that are maybe RV and boat specific um, that maybe have not only security panel access, key code access going in, but also key code access coming out. Yeah, because, um, and let us tell you, we've seen it and we've heard it. If, if, if it's just keypad activated when you go in, someone could easily follow someone into the facility. Right. And, and if the gates open automatically when they come out, that, that's just easy. Easy for the picking. Right. And, and and we've heard that story so many times. And you know? I and I can't tell you how many like travel trailers we see even in our own storage facility, which is very secure, but they don't have locks on the hitches. Mm -hmm. They don't cost that much money. And you know, yeah, they if they want to steal it bad enough, they probably can. But make them go that extra step. Right. You know, and and get those locks even if you keep it at your house right even if you keep it beside your home or whatever put a hitch lock on it or like she said they have locks that for the the tires sometimes that you can put on between the wheels that'll lock it mm -hmm. uh, spend a few dollars to do that and so you want to pay attention though as you're looking for an rv you know there are some you can store in your garage you know things like pop-up campers maybe some of the smaller R pods, things like that. You have an option of storing that in your garage and then you're not having to pay for storage. Yeah, it's a great idea. I mean, if you don't need a real big one, uh, these R pods, the smaller ones are, are tabs. Mm -hmm. I love those because they can, they can fit in almost most garages. Therefore, you're more likely to use them too because if they're right there, you have instant access. You know, you come home on a Friday and, and maybe you just get the urge and you want to go camping. Well, throw a few things in there, hook it up and go, and you can pull it with almost anything. So I, I think that's an awesome solution for someone that maybe is just starting out in the RV thing. Mm -hmm. Now, usually the downer to those real quick. I mean, this wasn't the tip for this video, but they normally don't have a restroom in those. I mean, so if you want a bathroom, you're gonna get another unit that probably won't fit in your garage, unless it's a pop-up that has a small bathroom like in it. Like a cassette toilet. Like a cassette toilet, like you can get mm -hmm. something like that because the pop-ups would fit mm -hmm. usually in a garage easily too. So, um, so those are the considerations, but it's a great idea because if you're not paying storage fee, and you have instant access to it and feel a lot more secure about it, voila, it's maybe a great start. That's right. 
So along with that, then you want to think about how often, realistically, do you think you're going to use your camper? Um, you know, if you are going to be a weekend warrior and every weekend you're going to be hitting the road to a new location or every other weekend, you know, a couple times a month maybe, um, you know, maybe you want to spend a little bit more money or maybe you want to get something that, you know, is a little fancier or maybe a little bigger or, you know, whatever uh, has, maybe you want to pay a little bit more attention to the bells and whistles and things like that that you're buying. If this is going to be something that you're going to use once a year for your week's vacation, maybe you don't want to make such a big investment in it because most of the year it's going to be sitting somewhere and not being used. Hey, in that case, you may just want to rent an RV. Renting is a great option. Yeah, that is not a bad option. Um, and I mean, there's other programs out there, and I don't know if y'all have read about them, but there's a lot of them. You can actually buy an RV, and you may want to rent it out, too. That You have that option. If you feel like you're only going to use it a few times a year or a couple times, you might be able to become part of that program where you could actually rent your RV to other people. And there's companies that do that now, and, and they're becoming more and more successful. I've heard that they have insurance and stuff for you. So... I mean, that may be an option, but that's you, you do need to consider how often you're going to use it because it is a big investment no matter how much money you spend. And that's right. And so, you know, what you want to, and, and you don't maybe know, you know, I mean, you might get into this and think, wow, this is much better than I ever expected and I want to do this all the time. Um, or you may get into it and then work gets really busy, family life gets crazy, the kids are in different sports, and you find that your time's really limited. So, but if you can kind of gauge that a little bit as you're doing your shopping, it's something that you can definitely consider that can help you maybe narrow your options down to figure out your budget and what might work best for you. Yep. Now, next we want to talk about towables versus motorized this is a question we get a lot yeah it, it definitely is and i'll just tell you the way i thought about it i mean my my criteria is we started with a towable we did and we loved it i mean the travel trailer we had we we absolutely loved it it had an outdoor kitchen and everything and i loved it. i still miss that today i miss that outdoor kitchen um but my thoughts were I wanted to go motorized because I wanted to take trips a little bit further and to me I didn't want to tow something long distances and also what we were towing with was our work truck and the, the truck we were using for our job so I felt like I'm taking almost my work with me every time I was going because and we were also putting wear and tear on our uh, vehicle that was making us money during the week. And I didn't want to do that anymore. Our fun vehicle was Stacy's Jeep. She had a 99 Jeep Wrangler that she brought brand new that we never used. So we thought, that's the perfect tow vehicle. I mean, you, you look at, you can Google that and check that out. I mean, Jeeps are the just the perfect tow vehicles. And we thought, we already have that. Right. So we thought if we got a motorized unit, we could tow the Jeep. So we'll tow our fun vehicle and wherever we got, wherever we'd go to, if we needed to go somewhere else, we could just take the Jeep and, and enjoy our time around the towns or whatever in the Jeep. Right. And so, you know, this is, this is something that there's no right or wrong answer to. No. You know, we know a lot of folks who have uh, travel trailers and fifth wheels and pop-up campers and it works great for them. I mean there's a lot of full-timers that 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 are in all of those categories. I mean we see them. There's a there's oh, yeah. a lot of people in travel trailers. There's a lot of people in fifth wheels. Yeah and there's a lot uh, of people in motor homes. And, and yeah and for sure. You just have to figure out what's right for you because what's right for us is not the same thing you know and there's so what you want to think about on that is budget, first of all. You want to think about, uh, again, how often are you going to use it and, th and where are you going to be using it and things like that. I think a big thing, towable versus motorized, in my mind anyway, is how often are you going to be moving? Because you want to think of your setup time, 
right? So if you get somewhere and you're, you're pulling your, your travel trailer, you've, you're disconnecting it from the hitch, you're leveling it all out, you're, you know, setting everything up. If you're, you know, it might take you a little bit longer. Now, you might get to where you can do it like that. Yep. I mean, when I was in high school, my family got a pop-up camper. There were five of us. We traveled all over the place in a pop-up camper, and we all had tasks, right? So when we would get to the campground, all of us would get out, and we all knew what to do. And one brother set up the jacks and, and got everything level, and my dad was cranking up the the tops uh, to, to get the canvas up and I was setting up the beds and and making sure all the framing was set up on that and my mom was going around sealing everything up and so we could set it up in no time um, but it well, was well not no time it was pretty quick <laughs> it was pretty quick I have to say but you know if you've got uh, something that's motorized or something that's a little more automated Maybe things aren't as easy for you to get around and, and do, and you need a little extra assistance, or you just, you know, you don't want to be out there. It's 95 degrees, and you don't want to necessarily be out spending a lot of time setting up, and you can just hit a button and level, or, you know, sometimes it's quicker depending on what you get. And so, um, you know, that's another consideration for well, that. And, and if you're going to be moving a lot more often, Maybe you want to minimize the amount of time that it's going to be to yeah. take take up you know, that, set up and take and down. that was that was her point there. But back to insurance is another factor, and and realize motorized you're going to pay a lot more insurance on motorized, and you may say, well, um, on a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, you got the big truck and you're paying insurance on the truck. Well. We're paying insurance on the Jeep and, and the RV. So, I mean, the insurance on a motorized is quite a bit more expensive than insurance on, on a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. Well, and maintenance also. Maintenance because you have an engine, and it's a big engine. And if you don't have a warranty on it, it is expensive. I mean, there's uh, even the gas ones, we have a diesel, but both of them. Or expensive to maintain right and so that's something else to consider too you know when you're doing your shopping we always say it can be real easy to get sucked into oh that's really pretty I like that it's but but stop take your time and just really try to logically approach what's my budget yep. you know what can I pay per month in a note if you're not paying cash for it which most of us aren't but you know, that would be wonderful if you could it'd be great you know but but if you need to be able to finance it, then you want to look at, you know, what's it really going to cost me not only for the RV each month, but what's it going to cost me for insurance? If I'm doing a towable, how big of a truck do I need? If I have, do I have a truck that that's, that's big enough? Mm -hmm. um, and you really want to do research on that. You know, you want to make sure that your truck is plenty big enough to tow and not close. You don't want those numbers want, of weight yeah, and, and truck capacity on to be the higher close. Side. You want more truck than you need. Right. And so, you know, you want to think about, okay, if I'm doing a motor home of any kind, whether it be an A, B, a C, whatever, um, what's it going to cost me versus if I'm doing something that's pullable, a towable, a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, and the truck that I'm going to need for that, the notes on that, the insurance on that, the storage that you might need to pay, all of those things, maintenance costs, just spend your time, do your research so that you're not surprised uh, after you buy. You, yep. kind of, you go into it confident and, uh, and as ready as you are but, you but know, don't, to be. You know, but don't think we're throwing so many things at you that there's too many things to think no. about before you buy. No. That's not what we're doing. We're just giving you more things to think about, but we want you to, if, if you want to get in an RV, find a way to get into an RV because this, this lifestyle, the people you're going to meet out of, oh, I amazing. guarantee you it's amazing. So we're, we're not trying to make it sound like it's difficult. It's not difficult. We're just saying there's more things sometimes to think about. We want you to think about them, but we, we absolutely think if you want to get into, a, into an RV, do it. Yes. Do it today if you can. That's right. Because, I mean, look at where we are. Oh I don't know gosh. with the light if you can see. 
But we're at Caprock Canyon State Park right now. It's yes. Kittiquay, Texas, up in the Texas Panhandle. We love this park. We have been here four times. And let me tell you. In this, five years. In five years, <laughs> we've been here four times. And this is uh, how many miles away? 600 well, miles or so? I don't know. So? It's, it's between nine and 10 hours from our house, depending on traffic. Yeah, and this is a serious ride. In other states, we would be four states over. <laughs> you know but we're still in texas and you can do this with a tent they have tent camping here and it's phenomenal yeah um but you know if you want an rv this is absolutely the kind of place that it can bring you yeah and we've seen rvs here of every size shape and kind while we've oh, yeah. been here this week absolutely that's for sure yeah so you know just know it's a fantastic lifestyle yes and all we're saying is we want to give you some tips so that you try it can be overwhelming RV shopping there's so many options there are so many things that you can think about there's so many questions that you're going to get asked and so many choices of amenities and things like that it can be overwhelming but, um, uh, but the main thing is it's probably not going to be the last one you buy I'll, I'll tell you, most people, we're already on our fourth? Yes. Fourth RV and in no time. And it's because we didn't get it right the first time, but it, we were happy with it. We were happy with it. And you, you're going to figure these things out. And, and it's just, we're just trying to help you not make a big mistake. You know, not go out and, and buy something way too expensive and, and be way too much RV for you. And when you could have just as much pleasure in, in maybe a, 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 a tab, like I was talking about, a little bitty one that could fit into your garage. And you know what, that brings, that, that opens up another point. And I'm gonna scoot back here a little bit because I feel like I'm shading you. Uh -huh. <laughs> but on that, I think a lot of people forget about needs versus wants. You know, with this, so many choices and so many things to pick from, take a step back and think about what do you really need in an RV versus what do you want? And both those things can be on your list to shop for. But when it comes down to it, maybe you want to put more emphasis on the things that are in the need column and not worry so much about the want. Yeah, if you just need to have some place to sleep with a, a roof over your head and maybe a place that can cook a meal or two, that's not tough to accomplish. There's right. a lot of different RVs and, and a lot of things that could do that. If you need a bathroom because you don't want to have to go in the middle of the night and go find the, the bathroom, because even RV parks have bathrooms mm -hmm. and stuff you can go to. Most of them. It, yep, most of them. So if you want to have a bathroom in your rig, to me, that's a need. That That's a, you know, we got to have that. We don't want to buy it unless it has a bathroom. Right. Or it has a shower. Or, you know, you might need to sleep, like we said, a certain number of people. Yep. You know, um, you might want a washer and dryer. But do you really need that washer and dryer? You're going to be going on extended trips where that's going to come into play very often. Uh, a lot of RV parks have washer and dryer facilities um, and there's other options along the way. So that might be for a lot of people more of a want than a need. Yeah, and we wanted a washer and dryer. We had a washer and dryer. We used our washer and dryer on our 35 footer and now we're going full time and most people would think, oh man, you need a washer and dryer. But we didn't need a washer and dryer. That's why we went and decided to get this one that doesn't have a washer and dryer. Right. We're gonna be in places that have laundromats, you know, RV right. parks and, you know, towns that have um, facilities where we can go laundromats where we can go wash our clothes once a week or once every other week for us a need was more to be smaller yep and to have to maximize our storage in that smaller space yep the so size for, for us was a need right the size going as small as we were could that was a need right a washer and dryer was a want was a want 
So when it came down to it, and we found this one that didn't have a washer and dryer, but it had the size we were looking for, and it had good storage for its size, that outweighed the washer and dryer, for, uh, just as an example. Yeah, and you know, we wanted solar. Right. We wanted solar, it wasn't a need, but our rig, as many of you know on our uh, past videos, when we bought it off YouTube, <laughs> It had solar already put on it. The guy that owned it before us, we bought a used one, had put solar on it. Right. So that then we got one of the things we wanted for sure. Right. I mean, we wouldn't have, we still would have bought this coach had it not had solar. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't a reason why we bought it or it wasn't a reason why we wouldn't buy it. But it was a add on for us that was like a awesome thing. But you know, you just alluded to something else and that's new versus used. Yeah. That's and that's exactly. another big question we get a lot. Yeah. And you know, again, it's all personal opinion. It's all personal preference. It's budget. It's what's gonna fit into your lifestyle, your wants, your needs, how you're gonna use it, and what's out there, what you can find. There's a lot of places that you can look uh, for, for shopping for RVs. There's a lot of online resources, things like RV Trader and things like that. You can just Google in, you know, uh, information about RVs and you're going to find a lot of different information. Uh, there's forums and things where you can collect information. But, you know, we've bought, this is our fourth RV. The first three we bought were new. This one that we have that we bought to go full time in was used, it was pre-owned. So, um, you know, it just, it depends. You can get some great deals for very slightly used uh, RVs where maybe somebody bought it and they were enamored by it at first, but it really wasn't what they expected or it didn't fit all their needs. And so they quickly turned around and sold it for something else. Or maybe unfortunately something happened and they couldn't travel as much as they wanted to. Um, and then you can find some older models that are still in great shape. Well, they these, like motor, well, all RVs depreciate pretty fast. I mean, so buying used, you can save a lot of that depreciation. Now, if you're gonna buy one and keep it for a very long time, maybe it's not as big a deal, but uh, depreciation is real. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's not, you're, you're, don't buy an RV for the investment. Uh, it's an not, investment in life. Yeah, it's an investment, an investment in, in experiences. Uh, that's why you buy an RV. And let me tell you, it's it's worth every penny. But if you're if you look at it as a financial investment, it's it's not a good one. Okay, it it's an investment in life, and that's what we're all. I mean, live life, you right. know, and and so. That's why I think it's worth considering looking at used. If you can get a good quality used unit, and if, if finances, I, I mean, I've seen some people out there that bought beautiful coaches that were, you know, eight, nine years old that were $300,000 coaches. When and they were new. And when they were new, and they're buying them for fifty and $60,000 now. And they're still in very good shape. And if they're diesel pushers, they their engines are million mile engines. Right. So, so I mean, that's the kind of stuff. Now it's not going to have all of the latest uh, frills. And, and that's part of it too. Yeah. Maybe you're somebody that wants the newest, latest, and greatest, the newest technology. Maybe yep. you need that technology. Yep. So maybe you need to err toward the new side. You know. Maybe you're somebody that wants to be more vintage, you know, and you kind of want to have throwback, you know. Maybe you want to do a little work on it yourself and make it your own. Hey, if you're handy, I mean, it's great to buy something used and make it your own. I mean, so many people do that out there. You know, I would say, though, if you're going to, whatever coach you're looking at, you know, it's always good to have it inspected. Um, by an independent inspector, it's a house, you know? If you buy a house, you get it inspected. It's the same thing with RVs. Um, if you have any questions, especially, you know, if you're looking at something and the deal seems too good to be true, 
It might be, it may not be. It may just be they just need to sell it quick and they're not really worried about uh, what they're losing on it. But there might be something going on with it. Definitely, so you can, if you're nervous about it at all, you definitely ought to get an inspector. And we will put a, a link in the description. There's an, uh, I think it's called RVIA, RV Inspectors Association, I think. I'm not sure of the name, but we'll put a link uh, in the description where you can go online and you can type in where you are. And it'll pull up a list of, of certified uh, RV inspectors in that area and you can have them uh, come out and take a look at it before you buy it so that you know what you're dealing with. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> so really what, you know, our biggest piece of advice is no one can tell you what RV is right for you, but as you start to kind of narrow down and see what you're interested in, if you're out at a campground or an RV park or an RV show or something like that, if you see somebody that has something that you might be interested in. Let's say you're camping or you're at a campground for the day and you see somebody with an RV that's got that outstanding outdoor kitchen or it's the right length or it's the same style that you're considering. Stop and talk to them, ask them questions. RVers are so friendly y'all and they're all ready to share their experiences and talk about anything that you'd like to know about their RV and RVs that they've had in the past. And also, if you're on Facebook, like millions of people are, there's a lot of good Facebook groups. Yes, there RV are. RV Facebook groups. We've got one, and it's, it's, it's great. You don't have to own an RV yet. At ours is RV Texas, y'all. RV and, Texas, y'all community. Yeah, the RV Texas, y'all community. We also have a Facebook page, but the group is better because the group is more interactive. Right. And... And on the group, all you have to do is ask questions and people will definitely tell you, give you their opinions and love to share their knowledge. I mean, RVers, that, that's what RVers do. I mean, that's right. we all, this is why we love RVing because the community, the people right. that RV are just, they're wonderful people. I've, I've, I've met very... There's, there's been very few people in our whole time of RVing that, that we went, oh gosh, I don't want to see them again. I mean, that very, that's very rare. I mean, we, we love it. We're here this weekend because of great friends that, that many years ago Stacy met on Twitter. On Twitter, and then we met them for the first time. We just happened to be both camping here at Cap Rock Canyon State Park five years ago. Yeah. And so now we've been back up here several times and always at the same time that they're coming so that we can spend some time with them. And they've come down to Galveston. Galveston. So, you know, it's just, it's such a great lifestyle, such a great community. Whether you can do it one weekend a month, one weekend every six months, two weeks out of the year, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Get outside, get on the road, explore everything around you. And uh, I mean, it's just, I can't even say enough about it. Yeah. So we hope that this has given you a little bit more information about what you might look for when you're searching for an RV. I hope it's not been too overwhelming. I know we've thrown a lot at you, but yep. if you have any other questions, always feel free to drop them in the comments. And if you are an RVer and you've got some suggestions of things we didn't think about, right. drop those in the comments also and so also, we can help folks. Also, remember, we have the other video, the one that was part one of this video. And we'll link that in the description. So yep. if you're interested in that, you can take a look at that. Yep. So until next time, y'all, thanks for joining us. Safe travels. And happy camping. Bye. Bye.